today we're doing a furniture flip. Yay! <laughs> Welcome back to my channel everyone. It has been a really long time since I've done a furniture flip so I'm super keen to get into this one. It is a single nightstand which I know is not necessarily super recommended to just flip a single nightstand because you know the cost value situation of it's a single nightstand not as many people want a single nightstand they tend to want a set but I found this piece on the side of the street so I thought that it would be a good little piece to play around with experiment with I have an idea in mind of what I want to do and I think it's gonna look really cute and really pretty so I'm pretty keen to get into it but it is filth city it's so gross in fact i'm going to remove my hand from it right now because it's it's pretty disgusting uh so i really need to give it a clean and i need to remove this hardware which i will replace with what don't know yet but i will replace it yeah so let's get into cleaning removing the hardware and prepping this piece for a pretty little makeover <laughs> I just thought I'd show you the back of this piece so you can see the wood veneer and the wood situation that's going on. You can see here that there's, it's all solid wood, even this back piece here is wood, but there's a wood veneer on here and then you can see, I'm assuming it's wood veneer or something else. Yeah, I think it's a wood veneer, but you can see that here kind of split off the edge. But that's what we're working with. I've got this piece all flipped over and I'm actually going to remove the decorative front of this and also on the sides as well. In fact, I think I'm just gonna chop the whole thing off and add my own leg. pieces off. It's time for me to go in and do some sanding. Now when I cut this I didn't cut it 100% flush so I'm gonna have to do quite a lot of sanding to get it down so that it is sitting flush. The reason I didn't is because I was a little bit worried that I would hit the base and accidentally cut into the base so there's a tiny tiny little lip on this still. I'm gonna start with that, sand that part and then sand the whole piece. I think I'm gonna go in with a hundred grit sandpaper to start with and then work my way up to around about a 220. So let's get into all of the sanding. Yeah I think I got my work cut out for me. Okay, well obviously sanding that down was unrealistic. I can admit that. So instead I'm going to use my new multi-tool. We're gonna to give that a go and I think that that should hopefully just get off the excess pieces nice and easily. Let's cross our fingers that it works. Well, I got it done, but um, yeah, it's definitely a little messy and it started smoking if I had it on the high setting. So I turned it down so to try and avoid the, the smoking of the wood. Yeah, interesting tool. I'm planning to use it again later in this project. You'll have to wait and find out why. Um, but yeah, I don't know 100% if maybe I was doing something slightly wrong as to why there was a bit of smoke happening. If you guys have used this tool in the past and you have some tips, definitely feel free to pop them in the comments below because I would like to continue using this tool but I would also like to not be semi terrified when I do that I'm going to start a fire on my furniture. So let me know.
After sanding the top, I last minute decided that I wanted to cut off that curved edge, so I used my circular saw just to cut that off. I have given it a sand, which I did forget to film, but you know what sanding looks like. However, there's still a little indent on that section, and the reason that it's still there is because the indent sort of starts back a tiny bit further than the side pieces, and I obviously did not want to accidentally cut those, but I don't want that indent there. So we're going to fill it with some plastic wood and then I will be using my Gorilla Glue to go around and uh, do some repairs to the veneer that's come up. I do need to put in some wood filler in around some of those areas as well, but where I can I would like to stick the veneer back down. So we're going to get to a few little repairs and then assess where we are at. four or five goes to get this looking really good. It's just, I find that plastic wood can be quite porous. Sometimes it doesn't fill completely the first go. Anyway, we're there, which is good, it's done. I'm gonna move on to the painting stage now. I won't be painting everything because I have a really fun design that I'm going to do, but I'm gonna start with the painting first because that's a little easier to do the herringbone stuff afterwards. And we're going to use this silk paint by Dixie Bell in the color Tide Pool. I think it will look really good with the herringbone style that I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna get to taping off and then popping this paint on. I have a country chic angled brush and also just a chalk brush, which is just from the hardware store. I'm gonna tape off and then get some painting happening. <laughs> number two on this piece. You can see on this draw the paint at the moment is pretty sparse. I did do a bit of a scuff sand as well in preparation for doing coat number two. My hope is that when I pop on coat number two this sparseness does go away. I do think because it's a lighter piece it will probably need a third coat as well. We'll just see how that goes. Let's get coat number two on and see what we have going on. I know it's nothing new. It's so good to see you We do this every day And I'm still so amazed by you So hold me tight painting wise and I have just flipped it upside down because we're going to do a little addition to it and that is to add in an MDF board underneath where the drawer would go so I didn't want the drawer to be seen when you look inside the little cubby nook area which is why we're going to add the MDF and to attach it I'll use a little bit of glue as well as my nail gun here now this one is a nail gun that you plug in and the reason I got the plug-in version is because it was a bit more cost-effective for me at the time so if you're a big
beginner, it's a great option to go for. I just got it from Home Depot, but I'm sure that there are plenty of other stores. I'll link it somewhere below. We're gonna get this MDF board attached and then give it a little lick of paint before we move on to the herringbone, which I'm very excited for. In fact, I think it's the thing I'm the most excited for. do before I flip the piece back over to get to work on the fun design is I want to attach the legs but I just took them out of the box and they are very mirrored and shiny and that's just not quite my vibe it's not really what I want for this piece so we are going to spray paint them and this is in the color pure gold it's rust-oleum spray paint metallic spray paint pure gold I did a little test to see if it was going to be the right tone as well to match the hardware that I have and it is so that's really fantastic it means I don't have to buy new hardware new legs or more spray paint so we're gonna get to spray painting these and attaching those to the base of this furniture multitasking continues while the spray paint is drying the other paint is drying i'm going to work on the next step which is taking a bunch of these newton what are you doing which is taking a bunch of these craft sticks or paddle pop sticks dude really newton come here that's it <laughs> let's go so the next step <laughs> ah the next step is taking a bunch of these craft sticks and just cutting off the ends to prep for the herringbone stuff that's going to happen. I know that I'm going to need a lot, so I'm probably going to do this whole box. And we'll be ready to do the herringbone design. Are you interested in it? <laughs> do you like the paddle pop stick? <laughs> so much better we are going to attach these now and I did originally want to have them sitting as flush as possible to the edge but this is apparently not constructed exactly straight so we're gonna put it a little bit back and cheat it back just a tiny bit so that it looks straight and even as we want it to look Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Let me figure out I do so so myself but we still have a little bit of work to go and I think it's time we get started on this herringbone top I just about destroyed my hand trying to cut all of those pieces they are done it's time let's design I think I rhymed and I'm not sure if I'm happy about it or upset about it let's do it I 
was planning to do the top, the base, and then the backboard underneath here. However, despite the fact that I bought 200 of these craft sticks, I think I will just have enough to do the top and the base. That's it. So that is what we're going to do. We're going to do the top. Well, we've done the top. It's complete, finished, waiting for the glue to dry. Now we're going to move on to the base. wooden pieces set overnight in the glue and I think that they are ready to be trimmed. Give them a little haircut. I am going to keep some weight on this piece while I do the trimming and to trim we're going to use the multi-tool again. Let's get this happening because I've got a lot to do today and I really want to get this piece finished. <laughs> taken the cover off and um, it's crooked. <laughs> I don't know how I didn't see this last night but the design is um, not straight which is really frustrating. I've spent a long time doing this and if it's crooked in the same way on the bottom shelf then I think I could pass it but if it's not crooked in the same way on the bottom shelf then um, I don't think this is gonna work. So I think I'm gonna have to check the bottom shelf to see what I've done. It may be a fail. Hopefully I can salvage it, but it, it may well be a fail. Uh, yeah, so it's pretty straight on the bottom, but um, super crooked on the top. Not 100% sure what to do about this. I'm gonna have to think about it. <laughs> this is a tough one. This is a small fail, but you know, I will prevail. I have to stop rhyming in this video. It's ridiculous. All right, I'm gonna have a ponder. I'll let you know what I decide. You guys, it is a new day. I feel like the sun is shining on me today because it actually worked what I did yesterday. So you will have seen that I used my heat gun to remove all of those pieces of wood from the top so that I could do this straight. It took a really long time, but it did work, which was fantastic. Once all the pieces were off, you will have seen that I used my square to get the right angle. That is something that I would absolutely recommend everyone does. I certainly will be doing that in the future. Don't know why it didn't come to me in the first place, but you know, we live and learn. And this piece has very much been an experiment. That is where we're at now. We're going to sand and get some wood filler into all of the little gaps. I am to finally be at this step which is doing a whitewash on the top and also on this base section. I'm going to use the silk, <laughs> you can't even see the label, so it's a silk mineral paint and it is in the colour of salt water so we're going to use that for the whitewash. I'm hoping that it evens out some of the slightly uneven tones. Let's get to it. There's a life I lead in this city Hurry and pick up my tea 
I can take what I need to get by It doesn't make it easy The other piece of my heart moves so warm Somewhere in the great unknown When I return from the afterglow Will you carry me like I am whole again? Wait Although with the silk mineral paint you don't actually have to do a top coat, it is all built in. Because I have done a wash with this and because this is a nightstand where it's probably going to have a lot of stuff go on top of it, I'm going to do a top coat of the polyacrylic in satin on the top and also this base piece. But all of the bluey colour part I'm just going to leave as is because I know the silk mineral paint is good stuff. Let's get this top coat on and see this piece finally come together. dry there is just one last thing that I need to do to finish this whole piece to bring everything together and that is to add some wallpaper in this drawer. The reason I'm doing this for this particular piece is because this bottom board here is just MDF. It was painted white. I can't obviously sand that off and I just don't think it looks very good. So I had a little rummage through my stash and I found this contact paper which I used in a previous flip and I think that the gold and the design is just going to tie in really nicely so we're going to pop that down. with me this week I definitely had a lot more work to do on this piece than expected but I really loved experimenting I hope you guys enjoyed watching if you like the video subscribe hit the bell notification hit the like button or you can also follow me over on Instagram as well that's about it for this week I will see you guys next week with another video bye look at how much dust there is Ow. <laughs> Um, just pop some trip. <laughs> you know what, painting left-handed is not as easy as it looks.